Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. It's me. It's a me, Mario. No, I'm kidding. It's it's Kevin. <laughs> Got a little, little Nintendo on the brain. I'm having a fantastic day already, made even more fantastic somehow by getting to chat again with Alan Heyman. Alan, you might remember, he's been on the podcast before. He was delightful. Alan has a knack for coaching fellow introverts, helping them find their superpowers in an extroverted world. Obviously, I'm very drawn to that notion. He also specializes in coaching through transitions. To date, Alan has coached leaders who were born in 26 countries and work on five continents. Alan's also the author of the book, Don't Just Have the Soup, which is a great title. He's a communications and marketing veteran from the media, government, and nonprofit sectors with degrees in journalism and law. Alan has spent time as a reporter, an anchor, an editor, and a producer, spokesperson, business owner, activist, and team leader. Let me catch my breath. Alan's been up to a lot in his life. <laughs> his entire career, though, has focused on doing good in the world by helping others to grow. Alan, it's great to have you back. It's good to see you. <laughs> Kevin, happy new year. It's great to be back as well. Good to, good to be here with your audience also. Yeah, they're, they're pretty good too. <laughs> I'm quite fond of them myself. So let's, speaking of the new year, let's talk a little bit about that. I know you've got some exciting things moving forward in 2023 already. When we're recording this, by the way, we're about three weeks in. This will probably be posting sometime in February. So who knows what exciting things will have emerged between now and then. But right now, it seems like you've got a lot going on. So talk a little bit about that. It's been a fun month so far, a fun year, I guess you could say. So th there's joy in knowing that people who I've been working with for quite a while are still around or in some cases are coming back. So having the returning clients, having the clients who say, yeah, I'd like a little bit more of that, please, has been very gratifying. Also into some new stuff this year. So my colleague Jennifer Hart and I are doing a group coaching series that actually just kicked off in January. And it's a little different from some of the group coaching that she and I have done individually in that it's open access. So it is open and whoever wants to join us can. And we have an initial group that was made up of people who A, signed up for the series or B, are already existing one-on-one -on -one clients for either of us, and we're allowing them access to that group at no charge. So I'm gonna ask for that so, link when we're done, by the way. Absolutely, <laughs> you may absolutely have the link. And so <laughs> we've, we've opened up the coaching space to maybe people who have not had access to it for a while. It's you know affordable, it's lower impact because it's only once a month. It's a specific topic. So we're gonna come in and sort of open the floor and see what people's collective wisdom is on that topic. People are <laughs> coaching each other a bit in the space. And we're, we're sort of interested to see what happens when you have what is essentially a core community of people, but the composition of that community is changing a bit from month to month as people come and go. So what does that look like? What does that do to norms and behaviors and how we want to engage with one another has been really interesting to kind of evaluate so far. And we're off to the races and ready for February on that one. That's exciting. I let, that reminds me of one of my favorite dichotomies of authors. Or at least like like big like authors who write who create large worlds and they have the what's it called it's the architect versus the gardener where there's mm. the the to the types of stories that lend themselves well to the architectural approach where there's detailed plans and there's scaffolding and there's just building and you bring lots of people together but they're all united by this common goal and there's like this core attribute that's very structured and then the gardener is kind of a tender, a befriender, a coaxer. You allow the, the huge energy and natural resources to sort of influence and help grow the garden, take care of weeds as they come up, but largely guide. And there's like, there are, there's obviously lots of similarities between the two, but that reminds me of like the differences of having a more closed fixed group versus an open group where you're just kind of like, it changes and grows dynamically in ways that you can't really plan for. And that's exciting and very, it's very, 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 has a lot of potential to go in all sorts of different directions. I think you're right. And I'm looking forward to seeing how those directions uh, come about over the course of the next 11 months. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. Okay, so well, what else? It sounded like you were about to jump right into to, to the next thing that's going on, which is great. That by itself is fantastic. But I just had to say that little architect gardener thing popped immediately into mind. I was just like, oh, that's exciting. It's timely, too, because it's chilly, you know, in this part of the country for, for you know, this time of year. So the mind does tend to wander to things that could be happening in the actual garden in a few months time. <laughs> <laughs> well, what else are you growing right now? <laughs> what else am I growing? The rest of my practice. So yeah. definitely a lot of emphasis on where would I like to continue finding the one-on-one -on -one clients? Who do I best serve and how often? Thinking a little bit this year about capacity, because mm. I did find myself a bit overstripped for capacity toward the middle of last year mm. and getting better calibrated within my own space of what I'm comfortable with in terms of saying yes. And maybe it's not a yes right now. Maybe it's a no. Maybe it's I'll do it later. Maybe there's this terrific friend or colleague of mine who might be able to do it instead. Mm -hmm. um, because I, you know, 
what I decided at the beginning of this year was that I would like to stand for relentless devotion to all of my clients. Hmm. And I would like to stand for that regardless of who's paying the bill or how they come in the door. And that's different for, for many different clients of mine. And I want to make sure that I have the space and the energy to be able to do that properly for, for all of them. So the danger of saying yes too often is that there's too little for each person I say yes to. And mm -hmm. I don't want that to be the case. I don't want to struggle to try to remember the names of all of my clients or to have to rely too heavily on notes for detail or to just end a day feeling like, yes, I was in service. Yes, I'm doing work that I love, but I'm just depleted and I've got nothing left. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I want to stop before that happens. And I have the tremendous fortune and privilege of being able to set my own schedule as a small business owner and figuring out how the income and revenue piece kind of falls into all of that has been something that I've been just playing with on the fly. And I've been taking good counsel from people who have been doing this a lot longer than I have, as they <laughs> seem to have figured quite a bit of it out. And they're allowing me the benefit of their lessons as well. That's fantastic. It really is. It's almost insidious how how too many yeses dilute and diminish the power of your other yeses in ways that you it's it's hard to pick up on until it starts to happen and then you realize like you have that moment where you realize like i'm exhausted and like i, I if you feel that way and you start to look back and you're like I, I didn't really show up for x client or y relationship or for my for my family in certain ways it starts to like bleed into all of your other yeses and that's really like that's one of the motivating factors for me because as a a sort of people pleaser ish type person for a long time still am because I, I like that aspect of myself, but it had occupied such a central aspect of the way I showed up in the world that I literally spread myself too thin and I was thin in places where I should have been strong and stable and resilient. And I'd had to really like do some do some rigorous looking at the way I was structuring my life and the way I was allowing my life to be structured and embrace the power of no not as a negative but actually as a builder and a positive. Absolutely. And, and that can be an asset in some way, at least down the line, to the person who is the recipient of the no. So mm -hmm. just had this yesterday in terms of a, a, a nonprofit community that I serve outside of my work as a coach. And there was a request, a, a significant request that would have entailed, you know, just a lot. And it was also wrapped up in the request was a tremendous amount of, of, of trust and, and, and faith. Hmm. And I, I felt it. It's like, wow, I am, I am getting this request and I understand everything that that means and everything that that person is putting into entrusting me with the thing they're asking me to do. And that is the reason why I've given this due consideration and gotten to know, you know, over a period of time that was a bit longer than just immediately shutting it down because I knew I would not be able to serve in this capacity. I would not do it justice. I would not serve the needs of the person making the request. And in the end, we ended up having a lovely conversation by email about the nature of the no. Ooh, that, that might have to be the title of the episode. I just like, I like that turn of phrase, the nature of the no. The nature of the no. Got some, got, got some alternate meetings there too, depending on how you choose to spell no. Yes. <laughs> that appeals to the little English lit brain in, in me, but that's, I love the, the exploration and the sharing of that exploration of the no with the person who's receiving it. Cause it really is when done, well, when done with grace and consideration and intention, it's just as much of a gift as a yes is. 100%, because imagine another scenario where I wasn't as confident in my no, or where I had some inkling that maybe I could move a few things around, or I could push and pull a little bit, take mm. a little from here, put a little over there, and I somehow got to yes, and the result was less than ideal. I forestalled that possibility by seeing it ahead of time and saying, that's not where I want to head with this. You deserve 100% commitment, energy, attention, time, which I, I can't give, given everything else that I know is, is, is happening for me at, at the moment. And I think that the person who made the request understood and appreciated that point of view in a way that maybe people don't always take the time to explain, I suppose. Well, they don't take the time to explain because a lot of times you don't take the time to understand it yourself. And that, that, because that could be a very difficult, a very difficult path to go down, to begin down, even just inside yourself. I'm imagining, like, thinking about how interrogating what a no should look like, what it would look like in my life and realizing I don't want to let somebody down, love to, I love to go the extra mile for people. And it just, it's really, 
it can be quite frankly revelatory to really work that muscle because then that's, that's another thing too. You're worried. It's like, well, how do I know it should be a no? What if I'm wrong? And I actually would have showed up in the best possible way, but I just didn't know how to realize that at the moment. It's like, yeah, guess what? You're going to, you know, you make mistakes when you try things sometimes those are your teachers and that's then right. you, you you tear muscles to help them to grow and get stronger and it's one of those things is the more that you engage in that kind of activity really properly evaluate whether a yes or the no is the right answer given a given a circumstance and an event a commitment as you work that muscle you get better at understanding what it's going to mean and what is actually the right answer your nose will become not more certain in a locked in you know, non-living way, they'll become more certain because you've understood how to do the work and how to look at things and you know yourself better, which is a huge part of it too. It is, if you think about it, it is this, this sort of intrinsic process of getting to know yourself better, your capabilities, your strengths and weaknesses, how they overlap with others. You grow your own personal network. So you have, so you have in your head an understanding of, for me, this might maybe should be a no, but I could already in my head kind of hear a yes for somebody else that I know who's great at this kind of thing I'm being asked about. Let me think about that. Let me pursue that. Maybe let me have a conversation about that. And yes. it just becomes it becomes a stronger process the more you engage in it, which is it's scary at first, though, when you have it, because you, you, you can feel a little lost. You can feel a little weak. You can feel like you might make a mistake, which can paralyze people from even starting down that path to the good no, the strong no. Yeah. And as a fellow recovering people pleaser myself, I get it. And <laughs> as a coach who works with clients who come in often with this question of how or how much or how often do I get to say no to my boss when there's a power differential there. And I think where you were going just now is 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 perfect because what you can do is the a qualified no. You know, mm -hmm. it's not a slamming the door shut. It's a no, I cannot do that by Tuesday, but I can do it by next week. It's a, no, I can't give you a hundred of that thing, but I can give you 50. It's a, no, I can't do that, but this person down the hall who's amazing could probably do it even better. Or it's, no, the thing that you're asking me for is not actually the thing that you want. So let's have a conversation about what you actually want, and I will find the best way to deliver it. Because oftentimes the request is centered around, you know, a process rather than an outcome. And so mm -hmm. if you entrust your people with the outcome instead of the process, you can let them figure out the process and there's less no involved in that anyway. A no can really be just as much of an opener as it can be a closer. And by 100%. opener, I mean an opener where it's just like, it, it's the beginning of a conversation, the beginning of an understanding as much as it is a, a door closer. It's like, it's, it's, I think, I don't think people, and I love talking about this because no is such a, it's like one of the first words most kids learn if you, if you <laughs> humorously, but also in, in, in fact, in life that, that no, that I don't want to do this negative. It's like one of the first tools we get. It's one of the most dynamic tools we get, but I feel like we, a lot of us will just stop at that that toddler's understanding of of the concept of no and there's really so much more it can do for us and the people that we're trying to serve it's as, as we're talking i'm just like man i kind of want to i kind of want to noodle on this for a while it's something i return to periodically and just come to even greater understanding as i go yeah it's a great coaching question what is your relationship with the word no it's great i want there's I didn't want to, I, well, I was so excited about what we were about to talk about that I kind of like left the group stuff behind, but I do kind of want to go back to that because you were started talking about the new group coaching program that you've got going and it got me thinking about, and you were also mentioning how throughout 2022, especially in the middle, you felt a little, a little spread thin, like you had a lot of commitments. That's how, is what led us to the no conversation, which I've loved, but talking about the, the group coaching, you said something that very, it, it very much hit like a green light in me and how in the group there's coaching that's going on in between the members of the group that doesn't necessarily have a whole lot to directly do with you or whoever's running the group with you. I was wondering if you could talk about that a little bit and how you have found that to be in your practice. Cause I know the one-to-one -one is it's like, it's where almost, where almost everybody starts with coaching. It remains where the magic happens so often when you're just in that, that one-to-one -one back and forth relationship and you see the aha moments and the, mm -hmm. and the dawning of something it's, very magical and powerful and translating that or allowing that to be translated, creating the environment in which that can occur is a different sort of skill set and a different sort of approach to coaching that I feel like a lot of coaches struggle with. And I tell, I can tell that you've gotten coaching on this and are really excited about the ways that people have figured this out. So if you can, or if you, if you'd be willing, talk a little bit about that, how group coaching can still manifest the same kind of power and magnificence of that one-to-one -one coaching experience. 
I think, you know, as you rightly point out, it is it is less individual attention from the coach to the client, but that's it, it is a different set of objectives. So I think that the group coaching experience as, as we've had it so far in this program probably sits somewhere in the space in between coaching and facilitation hmm. in the sense that Jennifer and I hold the space. We create the container for the conversation. We ask questions to keep it moving. But even to the extent that, that I find myself talking almost all of the time, a lot less than my clients do in a one-on-one -on -one session, we're talking even less than that in the group. So hmm. our job is really to kind of keep things moving along but the insights are being exchanged on a regular basis without our involvement. And that's, that's kind of part of the setup. It's, mm. it's a, more of a peer to peer thing than a, you know, an expert to, to mentee kind of situation that some people come into coaching looking for, and maybe don't find sometimes, or even a coach to client situation like we have in the regular one-on-one -on -one work. I almost have an image of you like sort of at the controls, like an audio producer helping to produce an album where you're just like, just like lower, like the tweaking the gains here and there, moving little dials as needed, but mostly like once things are set, just letting, letting, letting things follow their own course as, as things are set up, you have the studio, you've created the environment in which all of this stuff can happen. And you're just there to kind of keep an eye on things, little guidance here and there as needed to almost conducting a symphony, so to speak. I'm maybe, maybe making it sound too dramatic, but it, it honestly, it kind of feels like that's me. Yeah, it is. It is very much improvisational in that way as well, in that you don't know what the destination is going to look like when you begin the journey. It's, you know, I, I trust this group of people. We're going to be in community together for the next 75 minutes and we're going to see where we end up. And it may be completely different from the expectations of every single person who walked into that room. And we just don't know. And we, we live with that possibility when we come into the space. And to circle right back and to bring everything together. That's why it's so important to make sure you have your full yes, the all the full powers of your yes ready in moments like that, because you're not ever sure what's going to be asked of you, what opportunities are going to present themselves, and you want to be ready, which means you want to be fully present, fully authentically engaged in the process so that you can go wherever it's ready to go, wherever it's willing to go, wherever everyone's going to take everyone else. I, I feel like that's just, I mean, obviously this all tends to come back to the same foundational principles. It's one of the reasons why we love coaching, but yes. I just, again, I, just, I love how, how readily everything just folds back together into showing up with the full power of your yes and making sure you have that full power preserved and ready to go for the people you're trying to serve. Yeah, for sure. And it's been, it's been a great journey so far. I, I I'm looking forward to doing it again and again. Awesome. That's could we ask for anything more? <laughs> I can't wait to wake up tomorrow <laughs> and do this all again. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so before I let you go, because we, I, I, this is a good time to stop because I'm tempted to do the thing that I told you I'd be tempted to do and just keep talking <laughs> to you for, for the rest of the afternoon, but we both have other people to serve today. So I want to make sure, first of all, the link to that group, that open access group, because I'm going to put that in the show notes, but I want to make sure that you say it out loud here for the audience as well. Absolutely. So we titled the series Open Coaching, The Essentials, because we're hitting essential topics every month. And so you go to PeacefulDirection.com slash essentials, and that hmm. will take you to the description page and the registration page for, for each of those. Perfect. And PeacefulDirection.com is pretty much your hub. It's where all of your, basically all of your action happens, at least when it comes to the website stuff. Yes, <laughs> that's right. Excellent. And are you, I know you're fairly active on LinkedIn. Is that your preferred social media where you like to kind of meet people, connect, network, get have people slide into your DMs, so to speak? I don't know if that's the right terminology for LinkedIn, but you know what I mean. <laughs> it is the only social network that I use at the moment. So yes, <laughs> good place to find me. Lovely, lovely. Okay, I'll have a link to your profile in the show notes as well. Man, Alan, it's... I'm, you know what? I'm totally going to have you back again, like in the summer. It feels like, it feels like you've had already such a fruitful and contentful 2023. I can't wait to see what you do. And I can't wait to get a chance to talk to you again, because our conversations just flow so naturally into, into the things I think we're both very passionate about. It's pretty easy when you're all, when you've been two people are passionate about similar things to just talk about how great they are. <laughs> I look forward to it. I'll, I'll happily do it again, especially when the weather is warmer outside. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Alan. Thank you to the audience. You've met Alan before. Go back and find his first episode. We Similar kind of conversation, similar kind of greatness, similar kind of inspiration. So check that out too. Make sure you check out Alan. Take a look at that open access group. I'll put the link in the show notes and we will talk to you again very soon.